Well, Honda Big Wing was teasing a two-wheeler to be launched soon in India for a very long time and we speculated that it was going to be the Forza 300 or the Forza 350. But to everyone's surprise, we have the Honda CB300F. And in this video, we're going to tell you everything that you need to know about the CB300F. And if you want to see video in Hindi, then you will get the link in the description and on the i button. You will get the link in the Hindi video. देख सकते हैं और हिंदी चैनल को सब्सक्राइब भी कर सकते हैं सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द डिजाइन नाउ ऑफ ऑन द आउटसेट दिस मोटरसाइकिल लुक्स प्री मच लाइक द सी बी फाइव हंड्रेड एफ विच इज सोल्ड इन द ग्लोबल मार्केट एंड सम ऑफ यू माई से दैट दिस लुक्स लाइक द हॉर्नर टू पॉइंट ओ एंड आई वुड agree with you to some extent it does borrow the same design but this motorcycle is unique in its own way and we're going to check out all the details of its design let's start with the front now at the front you get this nice led headlamp cluster and you have the high beam the low beam everything is led and it looks really really nice when it's lit up you get led turn indicators as well so all the lights on this motorcycle are led so it's keeping up to the modern uh, technology and giving you all led headlamps you get upside down forks um, now these are colored in golden much like the hornet and it just looks really really nice along with this uh, blue livery and the red bike also looks really really nice you get disc brakes at the front with Nissan brake calipers, 110 by 60 section tire for the front. The tire size is 110 by 70 and the alloy size is 17 inches. So yes, it's a nice chunky looking tire looks, gives the bike a nice butch look. And you also get ABS and the ABS is dual channel on as standard. Now, if you come to the side, uh, what you will notice first is this tank shroud. Now, this is a plastic piece, but it does give the motorcycle, a, you know, a big bike look. It makes it a little more uh, brawny looking, but uh, it is a plastic piece. However, the tank itself is also nice and muscular. So you have these nice crease lines, cutouts right here, which gives it a nice look. Um, it's flattened out right here so that you can grip the tank very well and you are able to grip it while riding. The engine right here is a 293cc uh, oil cooled engine and it produces 24.1 PS of power and 38 Newton meters of torque. I'll talk about the performance a little later. You also get uh, this design piece right here which looks like an engine cowl but it's not functional so it's just aesthetic and it's not really functional so it does not add a lot of value for its function uh, here you have the cb300f branding and the honda badging is right here and here you have the foot pegs and the brake lever if you move to the back you will see the exhaust it is a stubby exhaust just like you get on the hornet and let me fire the bike up and give you a listen to how it sounds So that's how the exhaust sounds. Let us know what you think of it. I think it sounds a little throaty, but it does lack that bassy note. Now, moving on, the rear wheel is again a 17 inch alloy, but here you have a bigger tire. You get a 190 by 60 uh, tire and the um, 17 inch alloys. You get disc brakes here as well. Nissan brake calipers and you get ABS on the rear wheel as well. Coming to the rear, you have this nice uh, tail light LED, LED blinkers. The tail light would remind you of the CB300R. And you have these nice grab rails for the pillion so that the pillion can stay in place while you are going fast. Uh, the seats, they are split as you can see, but you have, have this nice uh, block right here so that you know it will avoid the pillion from sliding forward whenever you do hard braking. The rider seat also is nice and wide. It tapers to the front so that you can grip the tank comfortably. <coughs> On this side, you have the Sari Guard, which looks really nice. I like the implementation of this. Um, 
it's you don't have the grills this looks really modern and overall it blends with the design of the bike you have a tire hugger right here and the rear is a five step adjustable monoshock and you have metallic foot pegs for the pillion here you have rubber grips for the foot pegs and here is the gear shifter you get a side stand there is no main stand on this motorcycle that's the horn right there i'll just sound it off for you that's how the horn sounds and now let's move on to the top of the bike here you have this muscular looking tank which is very well designed and looks really nice especially this black piece right here uh it adds a nice contrasting touch to the color of the motorcycle you get a hinged lid for the fuel cap and this is how the key looks it's a pretty normal looking key i wish that if this was a if, since this is a big wing bike the key should have been you know a little a more different or you know something that differentiates this from the normal honda scooters and bikes now let's take a look at the instrument console of the motorcycle and like you can see it's a negative led display and uh you have all the telltale lights right here this is the hstc or honda selectable traction control light um besides that the abs lights and all other telltale lights are located right here now the display itself it's pretty small as you can see but it gives you all the required information like the gear position indicator the tachometer fuel indicator uh you have two trips meet you have two trip meters and the odo right here uh the average fuel consumption side stand and the speedometer and the clock this is the fuel consumption you also get the average speed battery voltage status and all this information you can also access the trip meters right here all the controls can be accessed from this button right here and the toggle switch right here so while you are riding you can easily access the toggle right here the switch quality is pretty decent here you also have the pass light and the high beam controller uh the horn i already showed you how it sounds and this is the switch for the turn indicators on the right hand side you have the engine kill switch uh the hazard light button and obviously the ignition the handlebar itself it's one long piece and it is a little bit now uh, towards the rider to give you a sporty seating position and as you can see now the seat height is 790 mm and the riding position uh, it's a little rare set so you get a sporty riding position uh besides that it's very easy to maneuver so if you're in traffic you be able to easily maneuver the motorcycle it's not very heavy and you should be able to move around the bike in your tight parking spaces also very easily uh the mirrors i think they could have been a little wider uh, they are not very wide uh this stock right here could have been extended a little more it's a short stock but uh, you get a decent view of the traffic of the traffic coming from the rear but this could have been a little wider So that's all about the ergonomics and design of the motorcycle. Now let's talk about performance, handling, and the suspension of the motorcycle. Uh, well, uh, in terms of performance, now this has a, precisely it's a 293 cc engine which produces 24.1 hp of power and 38 newton meters of torque. Now uh, the gearing ratios, I found that they are very nice in this bike and. the gear shifts are very smooth as well talking about in gear speed so in the in the first gear you can go up to 50 km per hour the second gear up to 75 third gear you can go up to 110 and the fifth gear you can go up to 124 km per hour now the peak power the meat of the power comes in after 6000 rpm you can uh, cruise uh, at the sixth gear speed ah at the 6 gear at a speed of 9200 you'll you can you'll be in the 4000 6000 rpm mark and you can cruise very easily but after 6000 rpm that's when the vibrations start to creep in and you can feel them on the handlebars as well as on the tank now if you're revving higher above 6000 rpm you definitely are going to feel the vibrations um otherwise if you're staying under 6000 the vibrations are not that noticeable and you can cruise comfortably so yeah if you're doing long distance touring and not going about uh 
100 kilometers per hour you staying in the sixth gear you can comfortably ride this bike for longer hours but yes if you are going to rev the bike hard you will feel the vibrations so not the uh, the the refinement is not the best uh, that we have seen uh, especially from honda's uh, bikes the hornet is a bit more refined than this motorcycle uh, other than that the suspension is pretty good you will have a very nice ride it's going to be comfortable you won't feel any pain in the back the mono shocks at the rear do a very good job of soaking in all the bumps and undulations and so do the front suspension they also work really really well now coming to the brakes uh, the rear brakes they lack an initial uh, bite and you know you really would not you really cannot rely only on the rear brakes uh, you will have to hit the front brakes as well the front brakes have a nice initial bite and uh, one when you apply the brakes together you will get a good stopping power the handling of this motorcycle is also very very nice uh, you can uh, you know nick into corners very easily also getting in and out of traffic is going to be very easy for you handles like a charm uh, and overall you can definitely have some fun with this motorcycle if you're taking it into twisties and corners now let's talk about uh, fuel efficiency uh, now you might have seen on the speedo that this fuel efficiency was 13.5 but uh, don't go by that numbers because this bike has been in several hands and we've all been testing it riding it pushing it hard um, so that is that won't be uh, those are not the ideal riding conditions and in a regular riding condition this motorcycle should give you anywhere between uh, 25 to 30 kilometers to the liter and and based on the power and torque that this motorcycle delivers i feel the mileage is decent enough now let's talk about price this one right here uh, that you see is uh, the deluxe pro variant the deluxe pro has bluetooth connectivity now this bluetooth connectivity will give you uh, prompts uh, not only on the screen but also in your bluetooth headset so if you connect the bluetooth headset pair it with your helmet headset you will get voice prompts for calls messages uh, navigation um, and you can also listen to music so the deluxe uh, pro variant would cost you 3000 more than uh, the regular deluxe variant the deluxe pro uh, will cost you 228900 rupees ex showroom and the deluxe variant will cost you 225900 rupees ex showroom yes it is a bit pricey uh, the pricing could have been a little uh, lower is what i feel or Honda should have equipped this with some better uh, tech so they could have given a colored screen LED a bigger LED which is more uh, eligible more intuitive to use uh, let's talk about colors you have uh, all the colors are dual tone so you get a shade of black and uh, the color that you choose so here we have the blue and black there's also a sports red so it's uh, red and black and a gray and black color option that is available so this is the honda cb 300f for you uh, overall it is a well put together motorcycle but yes it does have uh, some uh, things that need uh, to be improved on like the brakes um, the vibrations the refinement uh, it could have been a little better now if you're in the market for a street fighter which uh, you would also want to take out on the highways or on the weekends this will serve the purpose uh, you also have other options like the ktm duke 250 uh, which uh, comes in the similar price range you can also consider the bmw g310r which is a little more expensive than this one but obviously you get uh, bragging rights of the bmw badge on that motorcycle uh, that being said let us know uh, what you you think about the pricing uh, about this motorcycle the features that is off the features that it offers and if you have any questions drop them in the comments below this is Whipple signing off. I will see you in the next video. Until then, rev hard, rev free and ride safe.